welcome to historically speaking my name is jayavardhan singh and in this podcast we talk about everything that is history so in this talk i am going to talk about prabandh chintamani and uh, how it describes the early arabic and turkic invasions so before we talk about prabandh chintamani i think it is important to first understand the text and and give and i think it is important to have a certain knowledge about the text itself so uh prabandh chintamani prabandh means chronicles or narratives and chintamani means wishing stone so uh, you can say it a uh, narrative of wishing stone so this is the you know uh, literal translation of this text prabandh chintamani and uh, according to there are uh, uh, versions of uh, uh, when we can say it was written some uh, somewhere you will find that the date is 1304 and in somewhere uh, it is 1306 but we can be sure of the fact that it is around the start of 14th century ad that this text was written the author of this text was a person called merutung and he was from vardha uh, vardhamanpur vardhamanpur is the modern day city of vadwan which is in gujarat and he was a jain scholar so what we see is that prabandh chintamani is uh, broadly classified comes into the historical indian historical tradition which is different from the persian or indo islamic uh, historiography so what we see is that when we talk about uh, indian historical traditions we find that uh, there are you know i think most important text of indian historical uh, tradition is raj tarangani of kalhan uh, but apart from raj tarangani of kalhan we see that you know there are various vamshavalis which were written that you know contains historical information and apart from these two text we see that prabandh prabandh basically are the jain historical traditions so in these prabandhas what we pre prabandhas i as i have already told you it is chronicles or narratives so in these prabandhas we find that there are uh, dynastic or historical information which is uh, is sometimes called secular history and there is also information on the religion about different aspects of the jain religion itself so that is how uh, so this you know uh, since we are talking about the jain historical tradition i think uh, when we look at the jain historical tradition there are broadly two different uh, categories in this historical tradition so jain historical tradition has the tradition of prabandhas which is chronicles and prabandh chintamani is a fine example of it then we have uh, something called charita charit uh, is basically you know uh, a biography of a particular saint it can be a king or a, uh, a jain monk or the even uh, jain tirthankar's biographies were written and the best example of a charit uh, is tri shashti shalaka purush charita which means the line uh, the lives of 63 great men i think uh, the author of uh, this text was hemchandra acharya and those of you who have you know some understanding of jain history and jain scholars he is you know the giant one of the giants of jain uh, jain scholarship so uh, this was uh, one you know charit and uh, prabandh are two impo- uh, two types of jain historical tradition which we find so as i have said like um, uh, prabandhas uh, in prabandh chintamani itself we find that there are uh, you know important valuable dynast- dynastic histories and uh, it basically deals with secular affairs but uh, it is also uh, we can say that uh, there is also a great amount of religious knowledge which we can get from this text and uh, you know when you read this text you get a sense that there is you know uh, uh, like every story the author is trying to you know impart some wisdom of how a good king should govern then there is also a attempt or you can say subtle uh, you know uh, subtle attempt by the author to show the superiority of the jain religion 
and this is pecul not you know peculiar to the prabandhas itself there are multiple uh, sectarian uh, we can call it sectarian uh, uh, so there are various religious tradition which uh, you know have this habit so it is not uh, unique to jain prabandha or even prabandha chintamani itself and uh, in the Prabandh Chintamadi, when we read the, for example, particularly when we are talking about the dynastic and uh, secular history, we find that the uh, Prabandh Chintamadi contains the narrative of uh, early uh, rulers of Gujarat. So basically, it 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 is it deals with Prabandh Chintamadi deals with Gujarat history primarily. So in Gujarat history, the uh, the history of Prabandh Chintamani starts with the ruler of Chavadas or they are called Chapot, uh, Chapotkata. Uh, this is another name of the Chavada rulers which we find. Then we have uh, narratives of Chalukyas. And finally, the Vaghela rulers are also discussed. So these are the three major dynasties of Gujarat that are covered in Prabandha Chintamani. But we see that there are marginal reference to Pratiharas, Chandel, Parmars, etc. Then uh, we see that, you know, uh, Prithviraj Chauhan and uh, Jayachandra are, are also mentioned in this text. So, you know, this is the broad overview of what is Prabandh Chintamani and uh, what uh, uh, you know ab about the information of, about this about the author of this text but I think uh, one you know interesting aspect of Prabandh Chintamani which is uh, funny in a certain way is that uh, uh, when you read Prabandh Chintamani uh, it is you know uh, when it talks about the date of suppose when a person uh, when a king is coronated it gives you so the uh, so the date which is mentioned in Pra Prabandha Chintamani is quite detailed. So you will find that first we have the year. So a Vikram Sambat. So we have the year when this king was coronated, the month of the year, then the tithi of this year, then even the weekdays of the year is is mentioned, and finally even the nakshatra. So what you can see is that you can. Uh, predict at least you know uh, exact not exact time but at least for 200 sorry uh, two hours or uh, in th three hours gap we can say that it is during this time that this certain king was coronated now uh, it is you will um, when i first read that i was you know quite interested that this is you know absolutely a uh, great detail which we can uh, get our inform or uh, get our hands on but uh, it turns out that most of the nakshatras and even the weekdays that are mentioned in Prab prabandh chintamani are completely false so what uh, there is this article uh, which i will mention in the you know uh, in the references so you can read that so what appears what uh, you know what we what we can say is that in order to make his narrative or his uh, uh, what you can say uh, his writing more credible uh, Merutung has added these details about nakshatras and when uh, in which nakshatra or in which weekday of the nakshatra this uh, uh, this particular king was coronated so uh, to give you an example there are 15 nakshatras in prabandha chintamani which are mentioned and all of the 15 nakshatras are wrong so uh, 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 so for example you know mool raj is an important king who i think most of us know about so according to prabandh chintamani he is you know uh, he was coronated on vikram samvat 933 ashad sulk uh, uh, sorry ashad shuk shukla uh, the date was 15th thursday at midnight so this is you know uh, this is the precise detail of mool raj coronation which uh, Meru, merutung provides but it turns out that uh, the the nakshatra which is mentioned in this coronation is you know we can calculate uh, based on the you know location of stars whether the date which is mentioned in the 
in this uh, text is right or wrong so uh, by uh, some scholars have done that and they have found that most of the nakshatras which is uh, present in prabandh chintamani is absolutely wrong so uh, so uh, should we completely discard the dates as, as well uh, no uh, what we can say is that the dates and to a certain extent uh, the months may be true but uh, this cannot be said of weekdays or uh, not certainly for the nakshatras so this is you know an interesting aspect of prabandh chintamani that we find in order to make his narrative more credible he has added details which are absolutely wrong <laughs> so i think this is quite a fascinating uh, aspect of prabandh chintamani now uh, let's move to the main topic of the discussion which was how early turkic or you know uh, arabic in, uh, invasions uh, were depicted so what we see is that uh, at the start of the text uh, the there is no mention of the term musliman or even arab what we see is that primarily the term malich is used to describe these uh, people who were invading and uh, you know at the start of the text you can say how they had the what uh, perception of the malichas uh, the people of the this area gujarat area uh, had so what we see is that there is this mention of a jain monk called shobhana and shobhana tells us uh, to a uh, minister uh, to a king's minister that jain monk are permitted to even collect food from a family of malich so uh, now the the whole passage is that he is contrasting that uh, as a jain monk this uh, this shobhan uh, so shobhan is telling this minister uh, that he cannot eat uh, you know prepared by or for the kings but as a monk he can you know uh, get bhiksha or arms from a family of the malichya itself it is permitted so so you know the fact that malichyas are mentioned here so it it uh, in my view it could be the case that uh, it was considered you know impure Uh, by certain section of society to take food from the malichas and the fact that you know this jain monk shobhan is telling us that even uh, 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 hermits are allowed to collect food from the malichas shows that there was some kind of uh, 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 this this view was present in a certain section of society so this was you know then most of the time uh, the malichas are mentioned as uh, there are regular references to the attacks of the malichya army so for example there is this uh, 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 period when king siddharaj was ruling uh, 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 Pat patna patna was you know important city uh, of gujarat ancient gujarat so here we are you know again told that there was a kshatriya named mangu mangu sorry so mangu fought the kshatriyas and it appears that uh, sorry not fought the kshatriyas he fought the malichas and uh, it appears that according to prabandh chintamani the malichas had penetrated deep into the patan city itself because patan uh, patan city itself because uh, we are told that the spot where this kshatriya mangu was killed was you know uh, it was uh, after his death it this spot was named after him so uh, in historical terms whether if we look at you know from the arabic sources it is uh, certainly true that when you know the arabs had established themselves in sindh they used to make raids in the indian territories uh, uh, east of the sindh so gujarat was the prime target of these arab raids and it also appears that there was some kind of you know uh, relation with the the uh, with the muslim rulers of sindh 
बिकॉज इन इन द प्रबंध चिंतामणि देर इज दिस इंटरेस्टिंग एपिसोड नाउ दिस एपिसोड इज इंटरेस्टिंग इन द फैक्ट दैट इट टॉक्स अबाउट मलिच्छ किंग एंड द मिनिस्टर्स ऑफ मलिच्छ बट इट ऑल्सो इंट्रोड्यूसेज ए मिथिकल और मिस्टिकल एलिमेंट इन टू द होल नरेशन सो वॉट वी सी इज दैट देर इज दिस यू नो इंसिडेंट वेन द चालुक्य किंग सिद्ध राज इज रूलिंग पट्टन एंड इन पट्टन मिनिस्टर्स ऑफ मलिच्छ किंग अराइव्स एंड वॉट to uh, is uh, what according to P- P- prabandh chintamani what happens is that after their arrival on the second day you know two rakshas come uh, came from uh, comes from nowhere and they appear in the you know court of king siddharaj and these rakshas are from uh, are sent by king vibhishan <laughs> and uh, what these rakshas tells king siddharaj is that king siddharaj is you know the incarnation of lord ram and uh, uh, king vibhishan wants to uh, wants to uh, see or wants to have darshan of uh, king siddharaj because you know he is the incarnation of uh, lord ram himself so uh, so king vibhishan is uh, so these rakshas tells king siddharaj that uh, king vibhishan is inquiring whether he should come to you know uh, to have darshan of king siddharaj or whether he would be fortunate enough to welcome king siddharaj to lanka <laughs> so here you can see that you know how king siddharaj you know is compared to lord he is not compared even he is called the incarnation of lord ram himself and then this uh, rakshas element is also introduced now what is interesting is that in nowhere of the te- uh, in nowhere this uh, this whole incident again repeats and the fact that you know the malicha ministers had arrived earlier and uh, after the arrival of the malichas this incident happens is quite interesting and we can you know guess why merutung uh, wanted to include this uh, whole this whole scene and what we see is that after you know uh, so uh, so these ra- rakshas inquire whether you know uh, king siddharaj will come to L- L- lanka with them or uh, will uh, will be will vibhishan uh, w- uh, wants to come in pattan so eventually king siddharaj tells us the, uh, tells these rakshas that he will you know give darshan to king vibhishan when he will co- when he will go to lanka eventually so uh, so after hearing uh, this uh, answer for from siddharaj these uh, rakshas disappears now uh, after this incident we are told that you know earlier these malicha ministers uh, were quite uh, haughty and uh, you know were quite uh, Uh, what you can say confident but after seeing that this these whole uh, this whole incident of rakshas appearing and these conversation between siddharaj and rakshas they became quite frightful and uh, they uh, they abandoned their bold attitude and uh, so you know b- although most of the uh, the incident is certainly not true but it uh, it uh, it it is uh, certain that the one there are two three conclusions which we can draw from this whole incident first is that uh, there was there appears to be some connection or some uh, you know diplomatic connection between these two uh, kingdoms uh, and there is also the fact that you know uh, we are told that these malicha ministers were had these they were displaying their bold attitude shows that there was you know um, i have this uh, assumption that there uh, uh, the the malicha ministers or even the in historical terms the muslims or the arab arab rulers of sindh they had uh, uh, the fact that they used to raid these territories they had certain advantages when when it comes to diplomatic matters now this is my conclusion and i think it is it could be argued that this was not the case but 
uh, I think it could be, you know, also argued that the fact that uh, we have descriptions of uh, Malichha ministers being haughty and uh, this whole passage was included the included in the in, uh, in during the period when the malicha ministers had have arrived you know there there has to be some reasoning behind it so this is what i believe now another important historical now we have talked talked about quite a lot about the mythical elements but another important historical element uh, which is which is present in prabandha chintamani about the interaction between the muslim armies and the indian rulers is the battle of gadarar ghat gadarar ghat is a important battle because here the armies of uh, mahmud gauri were defeated by uh, queen naiki uh, so uh, she was the mother of mool raj and uh, now this is uh, the description of battle and uh, how this battle was fought is not uh, given in this uh, in this whole uh, passage we are just told that he defeated uh, she defeated the armies of uh, 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 sorry and even uh, mahmud gauri is not mentioned we are just told that uh, this was a malichha king who was destroyed who was defeated by the uh, by queen uh, naiki and uh, when this battle happened king uh, mool raj was a uh, was an infant and uh, i seems to have forgotten whether uh, he fought uh, whether the, it mentions that this text mentions that uh, uh, queen naiki fought with mool raj uh, uh, carrying him on his back is not sure i will you know uh, i will uh, find out in a certain moment so this is about battle of the gadrar ghat and now there are two three interesting aspect of how you know this uh, uh, this text talks about malichas or you can say uh, now there is a passage where we are told told that uh, an alim alim i think most of us know uh, who al who a alim is so a alim wants to uh, you know uh, wants to go to makkah and uh, now this alim we are told that he was the alim or spiritual guide of suratran so suratran is the king of malichha now here you know you can see how prabandha chintamani has uh, is confused so the term suratran suratran is basically the sanskritized version of sultan so here you can see you know how the uh, suratran here according to prabandha chintamani is the name where we all know that sultan was the title so we are told that this alim uh, wants to now again alim is also also equated with the name so here uh, so what we see is that alim wants to go to makkah for uh, for a uh, visit and he wants a this um, he wants a, his safe passage in uh, so uh, he wants to go to makkah and most of the time uh, the ships uh, so this is a sea uh, he wants to go to makkah through a sea route and uh, the ports were in gujarat so he wants a safe passage f uh, in in the gujarat territory and this time the king is uh, viradhwal viradhwal i think most of us uh, is aware aware that uh, uh, one of the most famous ministers of virad king viradhwa uh, viradwal was vastupal so the, uh, we are told that you know vastupal wants to uh, capture this uh, capture this alim but there are two uh, ministers of uh, another ministers of king Vir viradwal who who you know who tells him that uh, do not do this this is against dharma and all this and finally this alim you know was granted safe passage and some money was also given to him and uh, 
finally we see that you know he goes to makkah and uh, he does his hajj and finally when he returns to king suratran uh, he he is quite you know uh, he 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 praises the minister vastupal that uh, this king had uh, this minister had treated me very well so according to prabandh chintamani uh, what uh, what this king suratran the king of malecha uh, he sends a letter to vastu vastupal and he tells him that you know uh, i am so happy that you had uh, you had treated my my spiritual guide so well and uh, he compares himself so this king of malechas compares himself as javelin bearer uh, javelin bearer of vastupal and he says that you know uh, my whole rule is for you and i want to do something uh, for you and he constantly pesters uh, king vastupal to do something uh, so uh, to grant uh, to you know to order him to uh, show his uh, how grateful he was for the act which he had done and uh, we are told that finally vastupal says to him is that uh, there is this mine in your territory and from this mine i want you to make a image of uh, uh, of rishab uh, rishab i think most of us know was a jain tirthankar so so this uh, you know malecha king agrees to paint this image of uh, rishab now what happens is that when this whole image has been made and now it is being installed on a certain hill we find that suddenly there is this great lightning that uh, that you know strikes on the temple itself and the whole temple in which this image was going to be installed gets destroyed and uh, and the you know the text uh, or the sorry uh, the prabandh chintamani does not uh, talk about why this whole destruction or why this whole lightning stri uh, uh, strike happened on this particular place but we are just told that this was because of the anger of rishab now as someone who is reading this text one can interpret this in a multiple multiple ways we can say that because now this is you know this is my interpretation is that because we can say that uh, the image of rishab was made by a malecha or under the malecha rule that is why you know rishab lord rishab became angry and he had destroyed the whole shrine itself so we can uh, you know we can uh, interpret this in a multiple way uh and another important uh, aspect now uh, we, when you know we talk about how uh, malechas are depicted in prabandh chintamani is that uh, prabandh chintamani also talks about the destruction of vallabhi vallabhi as i think most of us know was an important center of jain uh, jain worship and jain religion in gujarat and uh, in prabandh chintamani now you know there is this uh, constant uh, uh, th this trope which appears in almost every early medieval text is that uh, there was this you know some minister of a certain king gets uh, badly treated by the king and then he joins another king and then uh, this minister plans to overtake or you know destroy his former master so here again we see that you know the same uh, the whole story repeats and now what is interesting is that we are told that uh, the malecha army has you know surrounded the city of vallabhi and when you know the malecha army is closing in on this city we are told that the images of uh, uh, of various temples of vallabhi you know uh, started to move and they you know they went went to different directions and when all of the images have left the city of vallabhi only then the malecha army invaded and destroyed the uh, they destroyed this whole whole city completely now uh, 
so this is you know another uh, unique uh, uh, unique incident of prabandh chintamani which we can interpret in multiple ways uh, you can interpret in the fact that you know because those who are protect uh, uh, those who are you know protecting the idol have failed their duty now the idols have or the murtis have um, have taken the responsibility of saving themselves uh, and now you know they are moving where they they will be uh, where they can be safe from the from destruction so it can be interpreted in uh, uh, in different ways but the historical side of this whole incident is that there appears to be some historical information that vallabhi was raided by arab armies although the exact date and uh, during which period this raid took place is not known but it is certain that vallabhi was the prime target of the arab armies and there were multiple raids that happened and uh, some scholars are of the opinion that in some raids uh in in a particular raid vallabhi was destroyed and most likely it was the arabs who had done so now uh so you know uh, we are talking about you know quite uh, uh, quite distant kings of uh, so but one of the most popular kings is also mentioned in prabandh chintamani whose name is jaychandra and uh, Uh, again there is this interesting story which has elements of mythical which which has myth- mythical elements into into it is that we are told in prabandh chintamani that you know uh, so, so i think before i talk about it uh, the way jaychandra is described is also is also interesting in this text he is called pangu pangu is lit- literally means lame so lame why he is called lame uh, he is called lame because we are told that his army was so massive that he could not properly move every uh, anywhere and uh, you know uh, the text describes that uh, ganga and yamuna were uh, were his two staves so basically uh, his uh, his army was so massive that uh, it it uh, started from yamuna and uh, went all the way to ganga so, and because of this you know great size it was hard for uh, the uh, uh, jaychand to go anywhere so that is why he is called pangu and the same you know terminology or the same uh, title of jaychand is used in uh, prithviraj raso and there is also this text called rambha manjari which uh, which i, I think um, we can talk about it in a other another talk so the same title appears in multiple text now coming to the uh, main uh, main topic we are told that you know uh, once upon a time jayachand was uh, was go going somewhere and he saw a beautiful lady and uh, eventually he married her uh, he married her and when uh, this lady had a son uh, uh, she wanted to uh, to to make the, uh, her son a prince or to give himself uh, to give uh, this son a title of prince and we are told that you know jaychand ref- refused to, to do so because uh, this lady was not from a uh, from any royal house so because of this you know the, you will see you know the, the the whole trope again and again repeat so here again you know because now the uh, the name of this lady is quite interesting the name is suhava so this lady suhava uh, is quite angry and now he uh, he summons the malichas uh, now we can um, how she was able to summon malichas is another matter uh, but we are told that he she has uh, shama, uh, summoned the malichas and now the malicha army is coming so you know jaychand is quite worried about this so we are told that jaychand employs a digambar jain now here i think uh, one important uh, point which i should make is that uh, you will see you know point and point in different uh, periods of this text 
दैट इट इज द जैन तीर्थंग सॉरी जैन दिगंबर्स एंड जैन मॉन्ग्स दैट आर गिवन द प्राइम रोल सो दिस इज द सटल वे विच यू नो मेरु तुंग इज ट्राइंग टू प्रोजेक्ट द सुपीरियोरिटी ऑफ जैन रिलीजन now here we are told that you know a certain jain uh, digambar was brought by uh, jaychand and uh, we are told that you know uh, this uh, digambar uh, told jaychand that we should worship uh, the, we should sacrifice to goddess padmavati padmavati is an incarnation of uh, of goddess lakshmi so you know whole uh, all of the yagya is going on and what what appear what happens is that suddenly uh, padmavati reveals herself and he tells jaychand to uh, to does not worry, to do not worry and these malichas which will eventually go away now what happens is that uh, the, uh, uh, the malichas doesn't stop and they you know uh, they they are coming close to the, the city of varanasi now i i had forgot to mention that uh, here uh, jaychand is called kashi naresh he kannauj is nowhere mentioned so it is quite interesting so uh, uh, we are told that you know these malichas are approaching the city of uh, uh, city of Ban- uh, kashi and uh, so again you know uh, 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 these uh, the digambar tells this goddess that you know malichas are ap- approaching uh, nothing uh, you, what you have said is not happening so what should we do so again this uh, goddess tells uh, tells this digambar uh, that uh, you should not worry wait for some time now finally when the whole malicha army is at the gate gates of varanasi we uh, this uh, digambar you know b- became quite frustrated and he suddenly see uh, started saying that uh, you don't have any uh, to this goddess that uh, you are uh, you don't have any powers and all that and finally we are told that this goddess reveals herself that she is not padmavati instead she is the uh, she is the family deity of the malichas and uh, you know what what she does is that uh, uh he uh, she uh, she encourages uh, people with falsehoods and uh, false speeches so that the malichas could finally rob them or uh, sorry so that malichas could finally kill them so here uh, again uh, 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 so uh, the whole time it was not goddess Pad- padmavati but it was the family deity of the malichas that had you know encouraged uh, this response by jaychand now finally we are told that you know the the malicha army has surrounded the the city of varanasi and here you know an interesting incident or passage appears Uh, this passage tells us that the twang of uh, uh, the malich the bows of malicha so twang uh, i think when you stretch the bow the kind of sound the string of the bow makes is called twang so the the twang of bow was so loud according to prabandh chintamani that you know it uh, suppressed the sound of kettle drums that were blowing in the city of varanasi now this phrase has been interpreted by many scholars to suggest that it shows the importance of uh, uh, mounted archers or the important uh, importance of uh, uh, archers that uh, that that you know uh, malicha or uh, sorry muslim armies were known for or the turkish army turkic armies were known for now finally we are told that you know uh what jaychand does is that he puts this son of uh, um, this lady suhav and uh, he uh, he along with uh, this uh, this son of suhav is on a elephant and um, with all of the elephant and this son and himself uh, he drowns in the river ganga and finally the story ends uh, uh so this is the story of jaychandra 
Now, Prithviraj uh, Chauhan is also mentioned in this uh, and the name is uh, Prithviraj. So the complete title is not mentioned. We are only to, uh, uh, the text talks about Prithviraj, the king of Sapad, uh, uh, Sapad Laksh country. So Sapad Laksh, I think most of us know about the Salt Lake, uh, Shakam uh, or Sambhar, uh, Sambhar, which is the, you know, uh, which is the modern name of this whole area from where the Chauhans had their base. So here, uh, you know, the interesting aspect of Prabandh Chintamani is that it tells us that Prithviraj Chauhan had defeated the Malichya king 21 times. Now here again, you see, you know, in the whole text, we do not have any any mention of any name of, e or of a Turkic king or even the Arabic king. So here again, Muhammad Gauri, Shehabuddin Gauri is not mentioned. We are only told about the Malichya king. So we are told that Prabhan, uh, Prithviraj Chauhan, uh, Prithviraj had defeated the Malichya king 21 times. So now uh, what happens is that uh, uh, so after defeating this Malichya king 21 times, uh, this Malichya king, uh, this, this Malichya king again attacks the 22nd time. And this time his army is stationed stationed outside the capital of Prithviraj. And, uh, uh, and what we see is that, you know, the, the, uh, the army of the Malichya is stationed outside the capital of Prithviraj. And by the way, the capital is not mentioned. We are, we do not have the name of the capital. So, uh, the army is stationed and uh, mm, there are camps everywhere and Malich and it is the it, it is the period of night and uh, what happens is that there are two uh, two warriors of Prithviraj uh, son and uh, father duo who you know who are tasked to kill this Malichya king and finally we are told that you know this Malichya king was killed by these warriors so he in this story uh, in prabandh chintamani in the 22nd time the malichya king was killed by by prithviraj chauhan's warrior at night uh, uh, when these warriors attacked the camp of the malichas but uh, prabandh chintamani tells uh, tells us that now the son of the malichya king uh, who was killed by you know the warrior of Prithviraj Chauhan has now become the king of the Malichas and he has uh, he 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 has again resumed the war with Prithviraj Chauhan so so he this you know uh, son of Malichya king now finally he also attacks uh, Prithviraj Chauhan and uh, we are told that in the initial struggle, Prithviraj Chauhan's advance guard was able to beat uh, this Malichya king. And when, you know, Prithviraj Chauhan is pers uh, pursuing these Malichas, uh, he, they, he, uh, he has, Prithviraj, uh, Prithviraj has a minister called Shomish, uh, Someshwar. And Someshwar tells Prithviraj Chauhan, uh, Prithviraj that uh, you should not, uh, you should not, you know, pursue these, uh, these, uh, these Malichas and uh, leave them. But uh, Prithviraj does not, you know, uh, does not want to do that. And he thinks that Someshwar might be, you know, uh, might be collu uh, con uh, colluding with the Malichya kings. So in order to punish Someshwar, what Prithviraj does is he cuts the uh, ears of uh, Someshwar. And you know, you, here again you will see the same trope that uh, because of this insult, now Someshwar has uh, joined the Malichas. And uh, uh, what we see is that, you know, finally this, uh, uh, this initial battle has happened and Prithviraj Chauhan is... Uh, uh, is sleeping in his camp 
and uh, there is this interesting detail that prithviraj chauhan during this time was uh, had uh, had done a, a fasting of 11 days and this was the last day of his fast so he was resting in a in, in his camp and finally we see that you know at night someshwar along with uh, uh, malechas enters the camp of prithviraj chauhan and he was able to capture uh, capture prithviraj so you know the reason according to prabandh chintamani that prithviraj was able uh, was captured by the malichas is that because of this 11 day fast he was quite weak and he could not you know uh, he could not fight properly and that is how uh, he was able to uh, he was captured by the malichas now interestingly the term malicha here does not uh, is not mentioned for the first time the term turuksh appears so in the whole scene of uh, you know when prithviraj uh, prithviraj is fighting with the uh, with the um, with the turukshas when they had uh, they had entered into his camp here the term turuksha is mentioned not malicha which i think is quite an interesting uh, interesting detail in itself so finally prithviraj chauhan uh, is taken in in captivity and he again does the fast uh, again uh, again does a fast of 11 days and you know when uh, on the uh, and again on the 11th day he is worshiping god and uh, in order to insult prithviraj uh, this turuksha king what he does is he sends a piece of roasted flesh to uh, to uh, to prithviraj and uh, uh, what happens is that now prithviraj chauhan is worshiping so he does not know that uh, uh, there is this uh, piece of uh, flesh that has had arrived that has arrived and uh, while he was worshiping uh, a dog enters the camp where prithviraj chauhan is prisoned and he, uh, this dog starts eating this uh, roasted flesh and now you know prithviraj when he has completed his uh, his worship he is quite insulted and uh, he says to the malicha king that if he was able to you know go to his palace and uh, and uh, and uh, you know uh, and to have a proper meal then he would show how strong he is so you know uh, finally we are told that this turuksha king agrees to do that so um, prithviraj along with this turuksha king goes to the palace of prithviraj and when you know he is uh, he is in the palace he say uh, this malicha king or turuksha king sees that on the walls of prithviraj chauhan's palace uh, there are scenes depicted and these scenes uh, sorry depicted and painted basically so what these scenes depict is that uh, pigs pigs are killing malichas so you know Uh, prithviraj uh, sorry uh, the malicha king when he sees that you know pigs are killing malicha malichas and these types of painting these types of painting uh, paintings are painted all over the palace he becomes quite angry and insulted and finally uh, because in order to avenge this insult he cut cut off the head of prithviraj so this is the whole story of uh, how you know uh, the prithviraj affair which is mentioned in prabandh chintamani so this is the you know uh, i think uh, this is the broad i uh, most of the of the times or most of the incident where malichas are mentioned in prabandh chintamani i have mentioned and uh, i think uh, um, uh, when after end before ending this uh, talk i think there are two three important points which we can discuss first is that uh, although prabandh chintamani talks about uh, the history of gujarat and uh, you know uh, malichas also appears in this text what we see is that uh, uh, the somnath attack of mohammad ghazni mahmud ghazni is not 
not mentioned uh, there is no discussion of uh, uh, mahmud's invasion or attack of somnath or destruction of somnath secondly what we see is that this prabandh chintamani itself became an important text after its completion and we see that you know uh, the sultanat chronicles chroniclers who wrote their uh, history uh after after the completion of prabandh chintamani also borrowed from prabandh chintamani's uh, whole account and there are evidence that abul fazal when he was writing uh, the history of uh, akbar nama he also borrowed the the you know history of gujarat that is presented in prabandh chintamani so in this we uh, this way we can see how important uh prabandh chintamani wall uh, is there is also the sense that you know although these historia these details about the malichas maybe uh, most of these details certainly are not true historically but they does provide us a sense of how what was the perception of the uh, of the of the muslims or the early arabic and turkic invasions in the indian tradition itself so the prabandh chintamani as a text give us the perspective of how the jains or the people of gujarat broadly viewed this uh, the the whole period when there was this you know uh, invasions that were uh, coming from the west